Mademoiselle Modiste, who sold ladies' hats. And here is the Mademoiselle Modiste of the railroad hour. She's a Fifi we all take our hats off to. The glamorous star of the Metropolitan and San Francisco Opera Companies, lovely Dorothy Kirsten. in history for good or ill. Close perhaps may make the man, but since first the world began, hats have made the woman as they always will. Large hats, small hats, very tall hats, play a Pretty Mademoiselle Fifi. Oh, thank you, Madame Fifi. But I am paying you to sell hats, not give concerts in my shop. Why don't you always be singing? Oh, perhaps I am in love. Or perhaps it's because someday I hope to become a singer. You mean you are thinking of leaving me? After all I have done for you? Oh, please don't think I'm ungrateful, Madame Fifi. It's just that I want you to become somebody. Well, then, suppose you go in the back room right now and become somebody helping the hat trimmers. Oui, Madame Cecile, just as you say. Never seen such a girl. Madame Cecile. Oh, it is you, Monsieur Brent. I was hoping it would be a customer. Well, you don't look very glad to see me. You know, I don't think you like me. I have to like you. Your mother comes from Philadelphia every year to buy her hat here. I just don't like the way you take up my best salesgirl's time. Hell, Fifi never told me you thought she was your best salesgirl. Naturally. Do you think I would be fool enough to tell her? She's independent enough as it is. But, um, she'll get over that once I am her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law? Yes. I have decided Fifi shall marry my son, Gaston. After all, your intentions towards Fifi were not serious. Were they? Well, I... I don't really know. Oh, I'm sure you would not be foolish enough to think of marriage with anyone before finishing college. No, no, it isn't that. It's just that I want to be absolutely sure before I get married. You know, when one makes a mistake on an examination, one can always rub it out. But when it comes to marriage, races are a little expensive. <gasps> yes. <laughs> and being a bachelor has so many advantages. <laughs> oh, how do you know? My late husband used to remind me of it all the time. <laughs> And I can tell. You are no different from the rest. You like to be free to do what you want. The fools may prate of the married state and the evils of bachelor life. I'm happier far than the married men are who are cursed with a screw of a wife. I drink my fill if I have the will With friends who are tried and old And off when the company's good I stay I may not come home till the break of day But if dinner is waiting and I am away There is no one to nag me or scold For I want what I want when I My soul with delight on the morrow may seem to me vile. There's no worldly pleasure myself I deny. There's no one to ask me the wherefore. I eat when I'm hungry and drink when I'm dry. I will 
lots of good fellows still who will give me a welcoming smile. So there's no worldly pleasure myself I deny. There's no one to ask me the way. to know you value your freedom so highly. I will tell Titi just how you feel. Oh, I'll tell her myself, if you don't mind. She here? Uh, no, no. I sent her on an errand just a few minutes ago. Well, all right, then. I'll be back. I want to wish her all the luck in the world. Uh, by the way, what sort of man is your son, Gaston? Is he handsome? Well... Good build? Uh, well... Intelligent? Uh, well... Uh... He is a man, though. Uh, technically, yes. Well, I'll I'll see you later, Madame Cecile. Au revoir. Your pardon. Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't see you coming in. Oh, that is all right. I am used to having people walk all over me. Uh, Gaston. Gaston. Ah, <laughs> oh, Gaston, I was just thinking of you. And I have been thinking of you, my man. Yes, I know what that means. Money. Well, if you want another two from me, you will have to do as I say. What do you say? I want you to marry Fifi. Fifi? Yes. Fifi is absolutely invaluable to me. She could go to one of my rivals and get three times the wages I pay her. So, before someone with brains gets her, I want her to marry you. <laughs> and how much will you pay me to buy the bargain, eh? Not a sou. If you don't give me some money, Mother, I swear I will jump off the Eiffel Tower. Promises. All I get is promises. <laughs> Madame um, Cecile? Yes. What can I do for you? My name is Brent, Hiram Brent. I'd like to speak to the young lady you have employed here. I believe her name is Fifi. Fifi? Oh, yes, yes. Gaston, <laughs> go get Fifi. Oui, madame. If you don't mind, Madame Cecile, I'd like to speak with her alone. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I will step into the other room. I understand you, Yes, Mademoiselle Fifi. <clears throat> I'm Richard Brent's father. I understand all the modistes he's been visiting. Oh, he's been doing much more than visiting. Yes, I can imagine. <laughs> Mademoiselle Modiste, in case you have any illusions about this friendship between you and Richard, I thought it might soften the blow if I were to tell you nothing could ever come of it. What do you mean? Someday my son will marry a girl with position and money. Well, someday I shall be just as well off as you are, Monsieur Brent. You see, I have a voice, and I can act. Well, now, is that so? What sort of roles would you play? Any role. If I were asked to play the part A simple maiden light of heart A very glass in country clothes As to and from her work she goes I'd sing a maid evening strain And give
Mademoiselle. She's much like yours. She's pretty and she's talented, but she's as proud as she is poor. What do you think I ought to do? You are asking me for advice, monsieur? Yes, to me a few thousand francs is nothing, but just think what it would mean to her. Do you think she'd accept a loan? She'd be foolish not to, monsieur. When she became successful, she could pay it back. Then that's what I'll do. You pick out the hats and wrap them up while I write her a little note and enclose the money. You can deliver it for me along with the hats, if you will. I'll be happy to. You, uh, don't think she'll refuse me? I shouldn't think so, monsieur. You wouldn't, would you? Oh, monsieur. Well, I hope she'll be as sensible as you are. All right, there we are. Just slip this note with the address and the money order under the hat box ribbon and bill me for the hat. Goodbye, mademoiselle. Goodbye, monsieur. What is the matter? You, you look sad. I have just had some very bad... You have not heard anything yet. Mother wants me to marry you and blot out my past. Oh, she's not using me for a blotter. Hello, Fifi. Monsieur. I came over earlier to ask for a date, but now I guess all I can say is congratulations. Congratulations? For what? Oh, you're married to Gaston. I am not marrying Gaston, is you? You're not? Oh, that's wonderful. I've got four days left in Paris before I head back to Yale. We can make the most of it. Four days for you to have fun at my expense. And then after it's all over, you can tell me the same thing your father told me this afternoon. What? Huh? That someday you'll marry a woman with background and money. He had no right to tell you that. I'm old enough to make my own decisions. <laughs> You're still in school. Look, if we wanted to get married, I'd quit school and go to work. No, Richard. I could not let you work to support me. Then marry me, Fifi. No, Gaston. I couldn't let myself work to support you. <laughs> what? Did I hear you refuse my son? Without a struggle. You will marry my son or you will leave my shop. What have you to say to that? Goodbye, Madame Cecile. Ah, uh, Fifi, Fifi. <laughs> and then it let me get excited. <laughs> Let's be reasonable. You know you can't leave me. I'll raise your wages. I'll do anything. You needn't bother, Madame Cecile. I'm leaving your shop forever as soon as I deliver these hats to... to... Oh! <gasps> Fifi! How dare you rip open someone else's personal letter! What does it say? It says... <laughs> it says, uh, Madame Marcel Fifi, you are the little girl to whom I referred. Kindly accept the enclosed 500,000 francs to be used as your needs may require. Huh? With sincerest hope is for your success as a singer. A singer? Ha! I'll get down on my knees and beg before you ever sing for me. You certainly will. But Fifi, you just can't walk on like this. You don't become a singer overnight. Why, this is your home. You're leaving your friends. Alas, to part, how great the sorrow. To leave the friends grown fond with years To know perchance that on the morrow For love and smiles come doubts and tears
Mother's not home. Richard, what are you doing here? We didn't expect you back from Yale for another two days. Oh, finals were over, so I thought I'd head home. I guess I'm a little tired. Richard, you've been a little tired all year. You haven't been the same since we came back from Paris. Are you ill? No. I think what you need is a girl. Well, I'm not interested in girls. You're not ill, you're dead. <laughs> Richard, my boy, I really believe it's time that you got married and settled down. And you couldn't find a better place to live than right here in Philadelphia. Well, it's the time and the place, all right, Dad. If I only had the girl. I wonder if Cupid is silly or stupid Or if the little rascal cannot see For loving and wooing are all of his doing And yet he makes it painful as can be He mixes the stations, he changes relations For all your little schemes he sets a snare And though you have planned it and both understand it He'll fix it so your sweetheart is not there For the time may be morning or evening The place may be distant or near And the maiden demure may have made you feel sure that she'll be there without any fear. But there's always a hitch in it somewhere. And the thought sets your brain in a whirl. For seldom, if ever, you'll find them together. need a doctor to diagnose your condition. You're in love. Now, who is she? Oh, she's a girl. <laughs> you, you couldn't have made a better choice. <laughs> does, uh, does she have a name? Well, you might as well know, Father. It's Fifi. Fifi? You mean Mademoiselle Modiste? Son, I know she's pretty and colorful and all that. Well, I want some color in my life. Well, you've got money. Buy yourself a paint set. <laughs> Fifi's forgotten all about you by now. Well, what makes you so sure? Well, for one thing, she's become a famous singer. She went to England with some money I loaned her and became a sensation. The money you loaned her? That's right, my boy. And she tracked down my address and paid me back every cent. <laughs> if it hadn't been the way she proved the honesty of French women, I probably never would have gone into business with Madame Cecile. Now, wait a minute. You're going into business with Madame Cecile? Yes, and a chap named Edward Carlton. I've never met him, but he read about our plans in the London papers and put up the rest of the money. Well, when does all this start? In two weeks. We're holding a big charity bazaar and fashion show in Paris to introduce Madame Cecile's new hat. Well, then I could go with you. You'll need someone who speaks French to help you, and while I'm doing that, I can try and find Fifi. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. They're packing the concert halls to hear her voice. I don't wonder. Everywhere I go, I hear it. <laughs>
Yes, I haven't seen Gaston since the day Mademoiselle Fifi left your shop. Oh, don't mention that horrible girl's name. Let's uh, talk about more pleasant subjects. Yes, Richard. Why don't you go into this tent and have your fortune told? All right. Anything for charity. Well, this looks interesting. Dim lights and a veiled fortune teller. Oh. Well, go ahead, madam. Get the cards out and tell me what the future holds in store. Oh, you do not believe in fortune tellers, monsieur? Well, that depends on how much you can tell me about the past. Ah, oh, your past. Let me look at the cards, monsieur. <gasps> I see queens, nothing but queens. Well, I'm afraid there's only one queen in my life. And who is she? Oh, wait a minute, you're the fortune teller. You're supposed to be telling me. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. I see, I see a glamorous singer who sold hats once. Hey, how do you know this? Do not interrupt. You are in love with this woman. That's right, I am. But there is someone who stands in the way. I see a man, a man, your father... He wants you to marry someone with money and background. Madam Fortune Teller, I know a gentleman never rips a veil from a lady's face, but this is once I've, I've got to forget I'm a gentleman. My veil! Fifi! Oh, you didn't forget me. And if I can believe you... <laughs> My Richard, if I can believe you, you didn't forget me. Oh, how could I ever forget you, Fifi? This time I won't have to take all summer making up my mind. Oh, Fifi, I want to marry you. It's Fifi! Excuse me, the soldiers are outside the tent. And in appreciation for your coming to sing for them, they made you mascot of the regiment. They have never seen my face. And they're making me their mascot. Richard, what a wonderful compliment. Well, I don't know. We've got a mascot at here with a face like a bulldog. <laughs> oh, Richard, come on. I've got to go out and see them. <laughs> I'm proud of each and every one of them. Hark the drum, here they come on parade. And the flag hangs their church of TV. And the earth of fire is bringing to light. Did no one know the enemies are free? They would die of a joyful ado. Tenses. Our corporation hired Madame Bellini. I won't agree to paying you a cent. Well, I have a vote in this corporation, and I will. Well, Edward Carlton won't, and he has the final vote. On the contrary, I think Edward Carlton will. You, Fifi, how do you know? I happen to be Edward Carlton. Now, Fifi, how could you be Edward Carlton? I read in the paper that unless a third partner went in with your father and Madame Cecile, they'd have to give up their company. So I established an account in London under the name of Edward Carlton and joined them. You did this for me? It was at least this little I could do after what Mr. Brent did for me. And to think I said I'd get down on my knees and beg before you ever sang for oh, me. Well, are you going to get down on your knees and beg? Fifi, if I could ever get up again, I certainly would. <laughs> Well, Richard, you finally found your Fifi. Well, Dad, it was such a surprise, I, I hardly know what to do. You don't know what to do? Just ask her what song she sang for me the day I made my investment in her. What song did you sing, Fifi? Kiss me again. See what I mean? Say 